welcome back to another episode of the White Sox March to October. And guys, we advanced past the division series, sweeping the Jays. And now we find ourselves in an ALCS matchup, a rematch from last season against the Texas Rangers. But we're on a mission here. We're on the road to a three-peat championship title, taking this White Sox team from the worst team in the game to not just championship glory, but dynasty glory if we can three P. So let's see what we're up against then. Taking a look at the Rangers. They were the second best record in the American League this season, but that second best record was still a whole 30 games worse than our record was. A month's worth of winning is how much better we were than the second best team in the American League. The Rangers though do have an overall rank of six. Looks like their hitting's pretty good. Sixth in contact, second in power. The pitching though is way down there at 25th. So I do want to take a look at their team real quick just to see what we're working with and just immediately I don't really notice much of a difference between what they look like now and what they looked like last season I do remember though a few times during the season on the the ticker along the bottom of the screen it would say like Corey Seager was on pace to hit like 60 something home runs this season looks like he finished a little shy of that with 48 but still that's 48 home runs with a 325 average this dude's a threat but i do see why their hitting was so highly ranked i mean look at these ratings man so many guys in the 80s and most of them in the higher 80s you got two just below an 80 at a 79 but they even have a 90 overall on the bench jonah heim i'm guessing he starts against lefties yeah nobody else really stands out as a threat based on their season numbers like seager does but adolis garcia might be the closest he hit 36 home runs 40 doubles almost a 300 average himself and I mean, I don't know if it factors into the game, but we know what he can do in the postseason. Their pitching, though, ranked very low, and I want to see what that means, too. And yeah, you can kind of see at a glance why. Seems like their hitting definitely carried them throughout the season. They've got two rookies in their starting rotation. Looks like they did go out and get Framber, though. But yeah, other than him, there's not much I'd worry about in this starting rotation. They also, looks like they bumped DeGrom to the bullpen. He had a 576 ERA. I guess that'd be why. What about the back end of this bullpen? Anything we got to worry about? Paul Seawald as the closer. He's going down in overall. He didn't have an amazing season. They do have a lefty here. Is that? Yeah, that's their only lefty as the setup guy. And then a, a rookie other setup guy. Actually had a 79 overall. Yeah, he's the highest rated bullpen arm they have, this rookie. So yeah, I don't know, man. If anything, this will be like a bloodbath type situation. A lot of runs put on the board. But I trust my pitching. So if it's my good offense against this their bad pitching and their good offense against my good pitching. I mean, I don't want to jump to any conclusions too soon, but uh, this might not be the most difficult series. But let's be honest, with our team and what our team is looking like these days, no series should be a difficult series. And offensively, nothing about our team changed. The CPU didn't make any changes to the postseason roster. They did make a change to the uh, pitching roster, though. They got rid of Tim Meza and brought up Joe Barlow. So we finally get a chance to see Joe Barlow after me asking for pretty much since this March to October began. So I don't know. I might feel the need to make it a point to get that guy in the game. But anyways, I think it's time to get the ALCS start. We've got a 0-0 tie. So their bad pitching is actually held up pretty nicely to uh, start this game at least. But let's change that here. We've got a runner on. We've got nobody out. Starter still out there. Let's get to him. Wait a second. Wait, <laughs> I didn't even register what was going on there. They were they were showing the dugout. It looked like the Texas dugout, but we had we had a couple players in there too. Are we just intermingling the dugouts here? I I wish I would have paid more attention to that. That was not right. Oh, and we're we're sponsored now apparently. The helmet. <laughs> I don't know why that annoyed me so much. If you guys didn't see, they uh they up updated the game and they made a whole post about what they're putting in the game and updates and like the main thing pretty much the only thing was hey we put sponsorships on the helmet to increase immersion i don't know guys do you feel more immersed with the uh sponsorship on the helmet and then we have the wrong players in the wrong dugouts am i just being needlessly negative probably Oh, okay well i guess the game is fighting back now because they didn't let me check swing there 
Oh, and then that stayed in the zone. I actually thought that was a good take. I thought I was doing a good job there. There we go. All right, man. I don't know. I was kind of worried there. I, I hadn't really made a good swing yet when I've tried to swing the bat. So we needed that. We needed something like that to get things going. Now, one more hit, I guess, unless it's as hard hit as that last one was, but we should score a run. I don't think we got enough of that to even move up to third. Nope, that's too bad. Time that up. It was just the PCI wasn't quite on. Oh, I, oh, yeah, I missed that one too. All right, so it's the PCI that's more the problem. It's all right though. I, I can't be too worried when this team has played how it's played in the past. And we have Zach Gallon on the mound, 90 pitches in, somehow still has about two thirds of his energy left. Is he going to get another postseason complete game? Oh yeah, and that's three pitches to pick up another punch out. I guess I didn't look at the box scores. It's his 16th. Did that actually just say in the bottom right corner that was his 16th punch out of the game? Oh my God, it is. Seven and a third, 16 punch outs. He had like 15 plus in his last start also. Is there anywhere this? Yeah, this says what his totals are. What is he up to? He's thrown 16 and a third scoreless innings in the postseason with 30 strikeouts. So I guess the math there is in 15 plus in his uh in his first outing, but that's 14. And then now 16 today, 30 strikeouts in two starts. And he's on his way to a, another complete game shutout. And there's another one. Let's make it 17. I might have to hop on Google real quick and see what the record is for a postseason strikeout performance. Well, actually, after having just checked, <laughs> that last strikeout actually tied the record of 17 strikeouts in a single postseason game with 1968 Bob Gibson, because, of course, it's like the most dominant pitching season ever. So, of course, that record would have to be from that season. But Zach Allen is now... Well, hopefully next inning, one strike out away from standing alone with that record. Let's get him some run support, though, guys. Come on. Francisco Mejia, I've kind of relied on you a lot. Oh, and he's not going to come through again. And, of course, there we go. We fixed the PCI. Now it's the timing. Now I'm too early. Hayes with the perfect. I don't know. We got under that a bit too much. Only 57 power. And it is going to die at the wall because, of course, it does. <laughs> oh, my God. We just we can't help Zach Gallon out. I'm trying to think back. I'm pretty sure his first game that was a complete game shutout. He didn't pitch with the lead in that entire game because we walked it off. And it looks like that's going to have to be what happens again because we didn't put up any runs for him. Well, there is no shot that I'm taking Zach Gallon out here. He might even pitch the 10th if it gets that far. Dude, look at what they're swinging at. They weren't even close to that. There it is, though. Get the chase on the circle change low, and Zach Gallon has just set the single game postseason record for strikeouts. And he doesn't even need to stop there. I mean, the, the just record in general, I'm pretty sure, is still 20, right? A bunch of people have gotten 220. Zach Gallon's got two more outs to work with. He could reach 20 as well. Oh my god, we, we got him on that. That was so far inside. And that's 20. A 20 strikeout. Nine inning shutout performance for Zach Gallon, and the game isn't over. That's that's awful. Come on, offense. Pick him up right here. We got a new pitcher out there. We have three, four, five. There is no reason this game shouldn't end right now. And that's how we get things started. Not going to lie, hanging slurve. Kind of wish we uh, did a bit more with it, but I'll take a leadoff runner on base and then we can bring some speed on. This is actually shaping up very similar to our uh, last series game one walk off. Vlad got on. We brought the speed on first and then it didn't matter because Luis Robert Jr. just hit one out. Ooh, in the game, let me hold up. That was that was a take. That was a really good pitch, but an even better eye. And now we have the winning run up to second now. A, a base hit pretty much guaranteed. Well, I shouldn't say that. We've got some decent arms in center and right, but we've also got 99 speed. Base hit should win it. Hmm, that's a brutal miss, man. That's the pitch. 
Uh, that should move us up to third. I'm gonna go for it. I know that's a big arm. I got a good break though and the throws a little off i think we're in there anyway at least that was a productive out we wanted more but now we've set it up that one more of those another deep fly ball is gonna end it and that oh they actually yeah i mean i thought that was gonna end the inning i thought they were gonna go for the double play so i guess actually that's a better result at least we're still fighting we're still alive here in the inning and nope, I'm missing that one too. Honestly, Josh Spores there, I could not hit him. I made a decent swing with Vlad to get the leadoff base runner. And then after that, it was like a walk and then no good swings. And man, do I commit to it? Do I leave Zach Gallon in? I mean, he's already turning in the performance of a lifetime. He's still got green energy. There's no free runner on second. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, man. We're going to leave him in for a 10th inning. See how this goes. Hmm, and a walk. Yeah, I think I take Gallon out after that. As much as I would love for Gallon to get the win himself and get the, the strikeout record of 21, I feel like just in my past experience on this game, if you ever try and leave a starter into that 10th inning, no matter how dominant they were, there is some switch that flips. There's something that changes and they're just not as effective anymore. So instead of ruining everything and leaving them out there after the walk, we're going to go to Clay Holmes here. Reestablish the dominance a bit. And we got to get there, Robert. We got to get there, man. Oh my God. he That was close. Ooh, and we got him up above the zone. Probably wasn't looking for that. Runner on first one out, you'd be looking for a ground ball pitch. But no, we'll just punch you out. There we go. Easy three pitch strike out there. That's 10 scoreless from our pitching staff. I don't know how our offense is all of a sudden a problem. It hasn't been for a very long time. But offense, all we need is one run. Man, and they're sticking with Josh Spores even though he's down in the yellow. I don't know if that should be a good thing for me or not. Uh, I don't know how much of that I got. He's jogging out there. So yeah, he's going to run it down easily. Mejia though, that's a big swing. Get past him. Get past him. No, it's just going to be a single. Oh, if that was extra bases, that would have been so much bigger. That's okay. That's another big swing. We got to keep Mejia at second, though. I don't know. Should I have brought in a pinch runner? I mean, we already brought in our big speed, but we definitely have more than 34 speed or whatever it is. I might still think about that. Yeah, I'm going to do it because we still have Stassi. We have a backup catcher. I'm going to bring in Colin Houck, 67 speed. That's not, you know... It's not fast, fast, but it's still much faster than Mejia was. We just, we got to be careful on the send if we hit it to uh, center or right with those arms. And, well, that's not going to matter. Well, now that comes down. Oh, well, they're going to go to a new arm first. But Jordan Lawler's up. He came in as a pinch runner. Wasn't really supposed to get an AB. This is, uh, I guess this is the risk we take when we take Vlad out of the game. All right. I mean, hey, they didn't really throw me a strike there. Three straight balls that get me over pitch and then ball four. I don't know what that strategy is all about. Loading the bases for Luis Robert Jr. All we need is a base hit. Okay. 2-0 count to start. Definitely not going to expand my zone. If he's going to give me this win for free with a walk, I'll take it. That's a three ball count now, three and one. I almost want to just auto take now on a three one count. Ah, uh, yeah, I know that's probably a pitch I should be swinging at. And I missed. I think I think the changeup got me there. I think that's what it was. I think I saw that as a sinker and I was way out in front of it. How have we not won this game yet? Okay, there we go. We get the rollover grounder to start. As long as we keep them from doing anything, I guess we have as long as it takes for me to finally get one across. And there we go. There's... Wait. No. How? How, though? How does that hit off his wrist or whatever? Oh, my God. If that if that ends up as anything. Oh my God. Now, Leody Tavares won't swing the bat, and Holmes won't put it in the zone. There we go. All right, we get him chasing up. Just like that strikeout last inning. Might not have been expecting the high fastball. Ooh, he's taking off here. 
Throw him out, Stassi. Big arm. Look at him coming into the game as a forced defensive replacement. He's just cutting down 92 speed on an off-speed pitch. Is that going to be what it takes to give us the momentum to push this winning run across? My God, I, I just, I can't hit sliders. It, it's something about how the slider pitch is breaking to me right now. I just, I can't track it in. And then now I'm overthinking it and I can't hit anything else. And oh, that was just an ugly at bat. Oh my God. And I'm late and off of it on the PCI. Yeah, nope, that was... <laughs> I uh, I could not have been more wrong, could I? I said this series was going to be offense heavy, and we're sitting here going into the 12th inning in a tie game at zero. All right, well, two lefties do up this inning. We go to Tanner Scott. He's been our best arm in the bullpen all season. And there we go, three-pitch punch out chasing on that slider big time i mean we might have some sort of team record for team strikeouts if gallon gave us 20 i think holmes gave us three now tanner scott's adding to the tally oh that's no good there we go we used lowe's eye against him he wants to take everything take that in the zone man i'm actually kind of surprised they have their whole catcher platoon set up why would they not go to jonah heim in this situation you got the lefty out there and then on top of that this is a catcher and you're about to ask him to catch a 12th inning and we'll sit him down will the 12th inning be what ends the game and nope that's another swing that i'm just off of i i feel like i'm hitting jonathan hernandez the worst of anybody Stassi, nope, one pitch to him is all we... Oh, somebody, please. Just one perfect swing. Actually, I can't even rely on that because this guy already had our one perfect swing and that couldn't even do anything. That one was still an out. <sighs> On to 13 we go, I guess. Oh, there's Jonah Heim. And, well, he didn't strike out. But that, that's not much better. This at bat scares me, though. Josh Young against the lefty. But I'm, I'm sticking with Scott, man. He's been so good. And in terms of righties in our bullpen, we don't really have another big dominant righty out there. So I might just feel better being mismatched lefty righty, but having Scott out there than bringing in like a 70-something overall. And it pays off. And there's another punch out, another scoreless inning in the books. Nine from Gallon, two from Holmes, two from Scott, two, three, four coming up. Can we end it this time? Oh my God, it's gotten to the point where they're bringing in DeGrom. I don't know though, he's not the same Jacob DeGrom. We can handle this. Oh my God, that was a strike. You saw me check the swing. I didn't think that was ending up in the zone. I might've been too late anyway. I don't even know. Lawler, he's on. I don't care if the plate wait. Oh my god. I thought 99 speed. I didn't think I didn't think a chance was had on that. How quick was that release? Okay, well, it's a runner on. Seems like basically the only way I can get a runner on in this game at all is by a walk. So we just need three more of those without another out this inning, and we can win the game. Oh, a hit? It barely, it barely got over Simeon's glove. Still only can move station to station, though I can't get an extra base hit to save my life. Oh my god, there is no way that I just missed that pitch to end the rally. The, a hanging pitch, a hanging changeup. I think I was actually late on it. I mean, we're just unloading the bullpen, man. I'm not giving up runs. I'm at least going to do everything I can to not give up runs. Hopefully next game we can score because we're not going to have anybody left at the back end of this bullpen. I mean, there we go, dude. Our guys just keep doing their thing. I mean, Holmes gave us two innings. Scott gave us two innings. If Crochet gives us two innings, that at least puts a, a timer on how much longer we have to score our run before we got to go to some of our weaker arms and I can't feel as confident. All right, there we go. Kept that one in play. There's out number two. Actually, I guess I shouldn't speak too soon. If Duran's anything to go by, not everything's guaranteed. 
and we get Seeger swinging again. That's like a carbon copy of the pitch we got him with Tanner Scott. Oh man, though, somebody at some point has to come through. It's just, it, there's no, I don't, I'm, I'm losing my ability to even form sentences at this point, guys. This needs to be done. And I'm, I'm getting jammed. I'm under it. And I'm only seeing one pitch. How can you take a team that I've been as dominant with, like this team has been all season, and I'm sitting here 14 innings in and I, I can't do anything. And Stassi, that's just the, the story of how this game has been going. I have the right idea, but I'm still not close enough on it to get enough of it. I mean, this is almost like playing an entire full game at this point. We entered in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's now the 15th inning. I don't know what's more unbelievable, how helpless I've been at the plate or how dominant our pitching has been. This pitching performance, this staff as a whole, this is something special. If there's if there's a way to look at what's going on right now optimistically, that would be it. Like, I don't think there is a single way that this isn't the greatest team pitching performance of all time, regular season or postseason. See, my biggest mistake though was saying that before we got our last out of the 15th inning. That was not smart. And there we go. All right, we overcome it. We overcome the speaking too soon. Crochet, two scoreless innings of his own. I don't know if I'm going to be able to leave him in past this point. So this is it. We got to do it this inning or else we're going to have to see some 70 overalls. Please drop in. Okay, I will take it, man. Any way we can get a runner on base, I'll take it. We're still... <laughs> confined to only being able to hit singles and not being able to bring those runners around to score with anything but it's still something it's still a start all right there we go that is a big pitch to take i am bunting jordan lawler up i am bunting i am hopefully moving hayes up to third please get this down he got it down and there we go they get the out at first we've got the winning run at third base with one out, all we need is a fly ball. I figured they'd do that. The double play is set up now, but we have... Actually, I, I thought we had Montgomery up. My, uh, I, I was off. I think this game is messing with my mind at this point. It... Okay, it ends. <laughs> I thought that play was going to be made. I've seen crazier plays be made. I thought... A diving play was about to be made on that perfect swing. But Ezekiel Durant, maybe our worst performing player up to this point in the postseason. Of course, he's the one to do it. I can't even like get excited about that. It's just a relief at this point. It's just like, I'm just tired now. I mean, that's just, that is insane that we had a starting pitcher throw a full nine innings. Well, I guess not full when the game went as long as it did, but he threw nine innings and there was still six more innings that needed to be picked up from the bullpen and our bullpen did insanely good. But hey, at least we came out on top. Could you imagine how awful that would have been if we went through all that and then didn't win the game and we had to come back down 0-1 in the series? Now it's the Rangers. Now it's Texas that are the ones demoralized. We got to jump on them. Let's see what game two is setting up for us. It's no, don't do it again. Don't do this to us again. Don't put me in another zero zero tie in the seventh. I don't know though, guys, I was originally planning on playing the first two games of this series in this episode. I cannot play anymore after that first game. I know last episode we got the full series in, but I did say going into this postseason, I wasn't planning on doing that anymore. I wasn't going to force an entire series in one episode. So this is the stopping point for today so hey, as always guys make sure you leave a like for me if you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already but thanks for watching another one today guys thanks for hanging out with me and i will see you next time